part, it says use the following identities to prove the following is true. So let's firstly just write out the identities. Sine A plus B, this is given in the formula booklet. Sine A plus B is equal to uh, sine A uh, co cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And sine A subtract B, sine A subtract B is going to be sine A cosine B subtract cosine A uh, sine B, like that. Now, if we added these two together, let's see what would happen. Watch this. So I'm going to add equation 1 and add equation 2. Clearly, I'd get two lots of this thing here, and these two things would negate each other and disappear. So I would get that sine of a plus b add sine of a subtract b would be equal to 2 sine of single a cosine single b. Now we're very close to what we want. Um, I've got a sine of something. I've got uh, adding a sine of something different. And that's equal to 2 lots of um, uh, sine a uh, cosine b. Now at this point, if I just it took the fancy to define, so if I let, there's no harm in doing this, let p equal a plus b, so that p here is equal to a plus b, and q is equal to a subtract b, so that q is equal to this here, then uh, look what we get. We would get the following. We would get a sine of p plus sine of q would be equal to 2 sine of a. Okay, now look at these two. We've got p I'm going to write them underneath each other, actually. I should have written them underneath each other. It made make it, make it clearer. So Q was equal to A subtract B. Now, using these two equations, if I added these equations, would you agree, if I added equation 1 and 2, let's say, in these cases here, I would get 2A is equal to P plus Q. So that A is P plus Q over 2. And similarly, if I subtracted these equations, I would get 2b is equal to p subtract q. So b is equal to p subtract q over 2. Hence, what is a equal to? Well, it's p plus q over 2. p plus q over 2. And what is b equal to? Cos b, p subtract q over 2. And that's exactly what we're asked to show here. Now, that's a standard derivation that you should learn. And um, basically, you write out sine a plus b and sine a subtract b, you add the two, you get a statement like this, and you define your p to be a plus b, you define your q to be a subtract b, you use those uh, two definitions here and solve them simultaneously to make a the subject and b the subject, and then basically substituting everything back in here, your p, q, and substituting for a and b, you get the identity you're looking for. Anyway, then it says for part b, it says the following. It says, find in terms of pi the solutions of this equation. Now, it's always true in these type of questions. You're going to use part A to solve them. So, we want to find the solution of this. Now, look. Can you spot that we have a similar form here to what we proved here? Apart from P, we could let B 5x, and Q, we could let B single x. So that if we were solving sine of 5x plus sine of single x is equal to 0, instead we could use this identity here. We could say that's 2 sine of the two things added divided by 2, which would be uh, 5x plus x divided by 2, cosine 5x subtract x divided by 2, and that would be 0. Hence we would have 2 sine of uh, 6x over 2, which is 3x, and 4x over 2, which is 2x, so cosine of 2x is 0. Now, the beauty of this is we now have uh, two sets of solutions, when this is 0 and when this is 0. So our solutions now are when sine of 3x is equal to 0 and when cosine of 2x is equal to 0. So 3x must be the inverse sine of 0 and 2x here must be the inverse cosine of 0. Now we're looking uh, in terms of pi and we're going between 0 and pi. So I'm going to draw a graph out for these. Like that. 
Now, because I've got three x, I'm going to triple the the interval I'm looking for. Between zero and pi, I'm instead going to go between zero and three pi. So go up there to pi, down to two pi, and up there to three pi like that. That'd be zero. That'd be pi. That'd be two pi. That'd be three pi. And three x is uh, the inverse sine of zero, so three x is zero. So there's one answer there, one there, one there, and one there. Now we're looking less than pi, so we're looking less than three pi. We're not going to include these, this one. So our three x is going to either be zero pi or two pi. So our x is going to be zero pi by three or two pi by three. In this case, I'm going to double the range, so I'm going to go to 2 pi, so 2 pi would look like that. The inverse cosine of 0, well, uh, you should know that, but if you're, not, if you're not sure, the inverse cosine of 0 is 90 degrees, so here it is, it's here, which is at pi by 2, and there would be another answer here, which would be at 3 pi by 2. So there are two answers, so 2x is going to equal pi by 2, and is also going to be 3 pi by 2, so x is going to be pi by 4, and x is also going to be 3 pi over 4. So our answers in summary, all in a row, are x is equal to 0, pi by 4, pi by 3, 2 pi by 3, and 3 pi by 4. And we're done.